Hi guys, welcome to the final lesson uh, or installment of the Modeling Linear Relationships in the General 2 course. We're doing some exam style questions here, or past exam questions. So a couple of multiple choice questions and one written question. The first one here says, what is the equation of line L? So a couple of ways we could do this. Um, certainly if we're looking at the rise of the run formula, um, we could simply draw our uh, triangle in using the two points that they've provided us. Um, you can see that, that um, for the rise it's gone up to 2, because that's 2 there for the y coordinate, and it goes up to 4, which means the rise is 2. It of course goes from 0 across to 6, which means the gradient is 2 over 6, which equals 1 over 3. Straight away you can see the answer is going to have to be D, it's the only one it possibly can be. But if I finish it off, the y-intercept is 2, therefore the graph is y equals 1 third x plus 2. Um, likewise, you could have used the formula if you knew it, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which would give you 4 take away 2 over 6 take away 0, which is 2 over 6, which is 1 third as well. Okay, but D is your answer for that one. Next question. At the same time, Alex and Brian start riding towards each other along a road. The graph shows their distances in kilometers from town after T minutes. How many kilometers has Alex traveled when they meet? Well, this is where Alex is. He's currently four kilometers away. He meets at this point here, which is at 12 kilometers. Therefore, he has um, ridden eight kilometers, which is B. Okay, pretty straightforward in that one. Um, all right. Next question. Question three, Susan drew a graph of the height of a plant. What is the grain of the line? Well, I'm just going to use that as my triangle there. Now, it goes at one box, but each box for that one for my, my rise is 5 and my run is 1. So my gradient equals 5 over 1, which equals 5. Therefore, B is my answer. Likewise, you could have chosen a bigger triangle. In that case, it'd be 10 over 2, which is still going to be 5. Okay, 25 over th uh, um, 25, sorry, 15 over 3, which is 5. Okay, so each time we're still going to get the same answer of 5. And the last one here. Um, Sue and Mikey are planning a fundraising dance. They can hire a ball, so a hall, for $400 and a band for $300, which means I'm going to have startup costs of $700, which that would be my Y intercept, I would imagine. And you can see that for um, the costs, that's around about the $700 that we're talking about. Um, the refreshments will cost uh, them $12 per person, so that's $12 for the number of people that you're going to have um, as well. So when it says for part one, write a formula for the cost, well, it's costing me $12 per person and it's got X the number of people plus the extra $700 that I've got for my Y intercept, all that start off costs. And I've very easily got my cost equals 12X plus 700. Um, if you wanted to, I guess you could, um, yeah, try and come up with an equation using um, your gradient and y-intercept formulas here, but certainly that's probably going to be the easiest way to do it. Um, part two, how much profit will be made if 150 people attend the dance? Well, C equals 12 times 150 plus 700. Now remember, this will give me what my cost is going to be. So 12 times 150, I'm going to add on my $700 um, which is my start off cost. My costs are going to be um, $2,500. Um, my income for 150 people, you can see, is going to be 110, 20, 30, 20, 40. It's going to be here. So my income is this part here, which is $3,000. So income is $3,000. Therefore, the profit equals five hundred dollars okay um, likewise you could have just gone th straight through here and said for 150 people gone straight up to my line and said that's my cost that's my income therefore the difference is one block there which is 500 that's probably an easy way of doing it to be honest with you um, that was question three sorry that was question two actually no it wasn't that was yeah anyway um, that was the profits that was three
I didn't do that's what I didn't do. Sorry, my my fault, guys. I didn't do question um, question two, so I skipped down on question two. Sorry about that. Um, all right. So question two says estimate the minimum number of people needed to um, to cover the costs. Well, that would be your break even point, which would be well, it's between 20, 40, 60, 80. So that's 80. So it's 90 people. Okay. Remember that's your break even point. Um, sorry about that. So that was part two. So I've already done part three now. So now part four. Um, Sue and Mikey plan to sell 200 tickets. They want to make a profit of $1,500. What should be the price of a ticket, assuming all 200 tickets will be sold? So this is a fairly challenging question. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start working towards my answer. I'm going to find out what the cost is going to be for having 200 people. Well, I know it's, the cost is $12 per ticket. So 12 times the 200 tickets I'm going to sell plus $700. So I'm going to find out exactly what the costs it will, it will how much it will cost for me to have 200 people at my event. So if I put that in my calculator, we get a total cost of $3,100. Now, we want to have a profit of $1,500. So I need to tack on $1,500 there um, to say, show what my income needs to be. So if I add on $1,500, I'm going to have an income of $4,600. That's what I, I need to have. Therefore, if I want to find out how much per ticket, well, I'm going to have 200 tickets. So I'm going to divide that amount by 200, and I come up with an amount of $23 per ticket. Okay, and that's my part four. All right, now that's pretty much some four sort of uh, basic sort of questions that you'll come across. Um, hopefully you've got an idea now of the types of questions that you will see and have a crack at some of the HSC questions that I've given you previously and that you can find yourself. Um, any problems, please let me know, but just keep working at it, particularly the written questions about what does the gradient represent, what does the y intercept represent, those types of questions because they're the more challenging ones. Have an awesome day, guys, and drop me a line if you need some help.